Hello, and welcome to our programming and problem solving series. In this particular video, we're looking at the third part of higher level programming languages. In this video, we are going to look at the difference between procedure oriented programming and object oriented programming. Okay, so in procedure programming, the program is divided into small parts called functions, whereas in objects oriented programming, the program is divided into small parts called objects. Second, procedural programming follows a top to down approach, whilst object oriented programming follows a button up approach. Third, procedural oriented programming has no access specifiers in, uh, whilst using the language, uh, but object oriented programming. Uh, has access specifiers like private, public, and protected. So uh, basically, access specifiers um, help um, put the cap or on the or the limitation on uh, kind of data that uh, an object, or let's say yes, an object could access. Okay. Okay. Uh, so in procedural uh, programming languages um, adding new data and functions um, is something that is not easy uh, but with object oriented programming uh, adding new data and function is easy procedural programming does not have any proper way for hiding data so it is less secure but object oriented programming provides data hiding so it's more secure procedural programming is based on the real world object oriented programming is based on the real world in procedural programming, a function is more important than data. In object-oriented programming, data is more important than a function. Examples of procedural languages are C, Fortran, Pascal, Basic. Examples of um, object-oriented programming are C++, Java, Python, C Sharp. Okay, scripting languages. So these languages are often used for automating tasks. Um, Basically, they help us write small programs or control other software applications. They are often interpreted uh, languages, meaning they do not need to be compiled before execution. Examples of scripting languages are Python and JavaScript. Declarative programming languages. In these languages, you write codes that describes what you want to achieve rather than how to achieve it. They are often used for problems involving queries, databases, or configuration management. Examples of these programming languages are structured query language, that is SQL, and an HTML. So the SQL is used mostly for databases, and the HTML is used for web page um, structure or web development. Functional programming languages. Thus, Programming languages, um, these languages treat computation as an evaluation of mathematical functions and avoid changing state or mutable data. They emphasize immutability and functions as first class citizens. Examples of um, such languages are LESP and then Haskell. Markup and domain specific languages. Um, these languages are used for specific domains or tasks and might be part of a larger ecosystem or specialized to a particular application, such as defining documents, generating reports, or specifying configurations. Examples of such languages or programming languages uh, are HTML, um, XML, and we have the CSS, we have the structured, uh, structured query language, and then we have uh, latest. Concurrent programming languages. These languages are defined um, for creating programs that execute multiple tasks simultaneously, often used in multi-threading or parallel processing environments. Um, examples of um, such programming languages are Go, Elam, Adder, and Java. Logic programming languages. These programming languages are based on formal logic. Programs are written as a set of facts and rules, 
and the language uses this to infer conclusions and solve problems based on logical relations. Examples of um, such programming languages are Prolog and then Mercury. Advantages of high-level languages. High-level languages are easy to learn. They are easy to understand. They are easy to write um, programs. Easy to detect and remove errors. They have built-in library functions that uh, basically extends the functionality of the language. And then they are machine independent. So, um, as you said earlier, high-level languages uh, are closer to the human natural language. Um, so, humans can read and understand. A typical example is the print statement in Python. The print statement can be understood um, by everyone as a means of outputting something. As such, um, it highlights the ability of high-level languages to be easy to learn and then easy to understand, or even easy to debug or write. High-level languages also ask building functionalities. Um, example in Python, there are packages in Python that helps with machine learning. There are packages that helps with data analysis. The package that helps with visualization. All these are built in functions in the Python package that helps keep the Python programming language extra uh, functionalities. And when we say um, high level languages are machine independent, all we're trying to say is that high level languages um, can run on different uh, platforms. For example, Python can run on uh, Mac OS, and the same Python can run on Windows OS as such. Um, even on Android uh, uh, OS or Android uh, um, platforms, you have um, Python interpreters working there. So high-level languages can be said to be machine independent. Difference between high-level languages and low-level languages. Okay, so um, the differences, we are looking at um, the following features. One, abstraction. Very little abstraction from hardware. Um, that is for low-level languages and high-level languages. See, high level of abstraction from hardware. Okay, control by hardware. So low-level uh, low languages um, basically provides direct control over system resources, but with high-level languages, there is limited control. Portability. Um, Low-level languages are not portable across different machines, but high-level languages are portable across different machines or platforms. Readability. Low-level languages are hard to understand and read or read and understand, but with high-level languages, they are easy to read and then easy to understand and then are closer to the human languages. Um, example of high-level languages are... Um, Python, Java, C++, JavaScript. Example of low-level languages are uh, the machine language and then the assembly language.